All right, almost done with basically chapter two. We're, we're basically sitting on, on page uh, 54, about to do 17, 18, 19, and 20, of which 19 and 20 are shutting down the project and shutting down the exercise. So realistically, the only thing to do is 17, and I could have squeezed it into the other one before, but I, I, I there's just there's some cool stuff I just wanted to make sure you guys got. So here we are, we just basically been playing around with the form. Everything's awesome. Um, one thing I don't know if I did, if we go back to the form and I have a look, uh, my goodness, I forgot, there it is, the text at the top. I probably want to change this to like, you know, invoice application or something like that. And that would, uh, what that would do is it would change the form up there, but that's cool. So now um, we'd obviously want to run it, right? And make sure that everything works such as it's going to work. So there's our invoice again. Don't expect too much. These, there's no code behind the buttons because we haven't actually programmed yet. We're about to do that in the next chapter. That'll be an exciting moment. But we can take some default Windows functionality and uh, and bring that in. All right. So now I'm going to get rid of my properties. I remember I'll uh, remind you guys, go to get your properties uh, anywhere, really. Just right click on an object, go to properties. And then at that point, you can start going to whatever property you want to go to. And, and you're good there. So don't be too worried if you uh, ever dismiss your properties. I'm going to get rid of it there, and now I've got my solutions explorer. So what they want us to do on 17 is they say, use the technique presented in figure 2.9 to change the name of the form file from form1.cs, CS standing for uh, uh, C sharp, and change it to a firm invoice total. So what we're going to do there is we're going to right click on this thing. There is a, a rename. Right, he says, maybe there's not a rename. Is there a rename? I thought there would be a rename here. Maybe that's not one of the techniques that they actually brought up in that page. What if I just click on it? There, okay, I'll just click on it. Sound, sounds good. Firm invoice total, right? Um, this using firm is Hungarian notation to indicate this is a form. Not all of my colleagues agree with this. And I waffle back and forth on that myself. So just bear in mind, the book loves doing this. When you start working in a company or whatever, you might wanna say, well, what do you guys do? Would you just call it invoice total or would you put some kind of Hungarian thing in there and, uh, and, and you'll find out, right? Again, not everyone liked that, but uh, I'm gonna keep it that way because that's what the book does. Notice the other bit though, where the F, Right, the F is in lowercase, but the I and the T are in uppercase. That's called camel case, right? Where you capitalize uh, the uh, the first letter of the next word that you have. So if I didn't if I didn't uh, call it a form, if I just wanted to call it invoice total, I would have lowercase I and then an uppercase T for total, right? That's that's what's going on there. So form invoice total. Uh, camel case total is generally liked in the IT industry, at least from what I can tell. So I'm going to hit the enter button. Oh, actually, before I do that, oh, it's smarter than I am. Well, hang on. Okay. So right now it says I'm renaming a file. What I want to do is I want to go to here. Uh, I want to go back to my, um, before I actually rename anything, I want to go to college, the student download, student download, uh, invoice total. So here's the invoice total. Uh, there you'll see is, oh, of course, I don't, there's not a one-to-one -one in here. Maybe it's in here. I, I can't remember where the thing actually is now when I'm thinking about it. But anyway, I wanted you to sort of see, see how there's form one all over the place. Now what I'm gonna do is you're gonna say, you're renaming a file, would you also like to perform a rename in the project of all references to the code element form one? I'm gonna say yes. I'm going to go go. All right. Boom. And now what's happening is that this CS, it references these things. Let's see what happened here. Oh, and of course, I lost it. Let's go to there. Let's go to college. Let's go to student download, student download, uh, invoice total, uh, invoice total. And now we're starting to see right there. See what it basically renamed uh, all those. That's a, the fancy term for that is refactoring, by the way. But I basically changed one object. And it said, do you want to change all the objects so that it kind of still matches? Otherwise, in the good old days, I would have had to figure all this out myself. And, and that would have been very, very challenging. So that was the kind of the cool part there. I want to make sure that you had enough bandwidth for. Um, 
I did say yes, that's what it says. Click yes, and Visual Studio changes all references to form one uh, that have been generated. And then I did just 18 now where I showed you the solution explorer uh, it, it, it doing it. By the way, whenever you do a change like that, you also want to definitely test, 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 make sure your thing is still alive and working. All right, that's it for that. Now the next thing it says, hey, close your solution. So I'm going to close my solution. I'm going to go file close, close solution. It's got no problem. And that was 19 and now 20 is going to be closed. And I won't bother doing that now because you have got a bunch of stuff behind here, which you know you don't need to see the guts of how I'm doing this. So that's it then. So um, we can call chapter two uh, done from a video perspective. I hope you had fun uh, doing doing this stuff.